YouTube. Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. Well, this is a bit unexpected to say the least. Accidentally, this past week, GM not only confirmed the E-Ray name, but they also confirmed a bunch of other information about the car. I'm gonna cover what happened, what we learned about the E-Ray, what we didn't learn, what it all means, and then we'll end with Fred's take, my take on the situation and the car. So let's dive right in. So what happened? Well, unless you've been living under a rock or aren't on social media, you've probably seen that a bunch of information leaked about the E-Ray. Leaked isn't really the right word though. Let's quickly go over what happened. This past Thursday, so by the time you're watching this, it'll be a week and a day ago, there were a flurry of posts on various news sites and forums saying that the E-Ray had shown up on the C8 visualizer. At the time of the postings, it was actually still available to view for people who saw the posts and went and tried it. Sure enough, you could go to the visualizer, change the URL to 2024, and boom, the E-Ray suddenly became an option, and you could see the car completely uncamoed and undisguised. News of this obviously spread like wildfire, and in roughly 20 to 30 minutes, Chevy caught wind of it and locked down the site. But not before a bunch of screenshots went online and information was shared. I mentioned that it wasn't really a leak per se. First, it came directly from GM, and second, leaks are generally an intentional effort to share something that the owner doesn't want shared, like a sole employee posting screenshots or pictures of something. Like if you remember back in 2019, when the C8's body panels were photographed in a paint shop. This was unfortunately, well for GM, not us, just a mistake, and there was no indication that this was intentional on GM's part. So what did we learn about the E-Ray? Well, quite a bit. It's amazing what you can glean from photos, and perhaps even more so from the manufacturer's own tool for visualizing and exploring the car. There's a lot of information that came out of this, so I'm going to do my best to try to sum it up. If I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. I'm sure I probably missed something. Up first, we finally have confirmation that the new car will be called the E-Ray. It sounds silly, but this hasn't been officially confirmed by GM up until now. You'll recall the original E-Ray teaser video just mentioned Corvette Electrified, but pulled back on actually giving us the name of the car. Well, the E-Ray name is confirmed, and not only that, we have a good view of the logo, which evokes the Stingray logo a bit in the general shape and the lines. The logos are found throughout the car, including the external sides of the car, in the middle between the occupants, the bottom of the steering wheel, the top of the webpage on the visualizer, the license plate, and I'm probably forgetting a few. Next, as was largely suspected, this event confirms that the car is indeed an all-wheel drive hybrid version of the C8 Corvette. We can see the LT2 sitting in the back and the exhaust at the corners. So how does this confirm that the car is a hybrid and all-wheel drive? Well, critically, we get a clear view of the new wheels on the E-Ray. They're clearly different from the five-spoke carbon fiber wheels of the Z06, tapered out at the ends of the spokes, and they have a slight offset twist at the center. This is important because if we go back to that teaser video of the E-Ray, we can see that these are the same wheels on that car, and we haven't seen them anywhere else. And more importantly, we can see that the front wheels are spinning on the snow immediately when the car launches. All-wheel drive and hybrid powertrain confirmed. Up next, the bodywork, including the side wishbones by the air intakes, the aero elements, and the front vents on the car are all in body color matched paint. This contrasts with the Z06, which uses a lot of carbon flash metallic to accent the car. Additionally, the rear spoiler in the car seems to be exclusively the low, standard spoiler from the Z06. And while we're on the body, perhaps most importantly, the E-Ray gets the wide body treatment, same as the Z06. I think this much improves the proportions and looks of the car, just like it did on the Z06 over the Stingray. Next, there are three new buttons on the interior for new features to the C8 platform. First, down the side of the center tunnel, right next to the driver's leg, are two new buttons. One of the buttons is an auto stop start disable. It remains to be seen if you have to press it every time you start the car, if you want to keep it disabled, or if the car will remember between drives. The other button, though, is a bit more interesting. It's the symbol that GM uses in its other hybrid cars for regenerative braking on demand. This makes sense in a hybrid car, allowing you to use the electric motors to recharge the batteries when you brake, instead of using your mechanical friction-based traditional disc brakes. For those of you not familiar with GM's iteration of Regen On Demand, there are other cars that use it have a paddle on the back of the steering wheel that gives you on-demand access to regenerative braking. Regenerative braking just uses the electric motors to slow the car, using that momentum of the car, convert it into rotation, and it generates electric current, which can be used to help recharge the batteries in the car. 
If you need to stop faster though, press the brakes as you would in a normal car and the standard mechanical disc brakes will engage. Now, depending on how much stopping power regen has, you may even be able to more or less one pedal drive the car. I mentioned three new buttons. The third button is actually on the steering wheel, just under the Z mode button on the left side of the steering wheel. There's apparently been some confusion about this button and there are a few different theories on what it does. The symbol though gives us a clue and it turns out that GM uses that symbol to mean two different things in its current vehicles and it can mean one or the other or both depending on the car. The two modes that this symbol is associated with is adaptive cruise control, ACC, and separately front collision avoidance, FCA. Contrary to what some have said, GM does make some vehicles that have FCA without ACC. For the E-Ray though, it's not clear which of these, one or both, will be on the car, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was at least for ACC, which could tap into the efficiency of the hybrid powertrain and help manage how it follows other cars. Up next, and perhaps most interesting to some, there are three new exterior colors and one new interior color. The three new exterior colors are Cacti, which is like a soft green, Riptide Blue Metallic, which appears to replace Elkhart Lake Blue Metallic, and lastly, Seawolf Gray Tricoat, which I think looks pretty cool. The new interior color is called Artemis, which is also a greenish color with maybe a hint of gray in it. The two new green colors likely aren't a coincidence for a car that will be a hybrid, and it wouldn't shock me if GM uses some sort of subconscious clues to highlight an efficient supercar with the E-Ray. One other interesting thing related to being a hybrid, which I touched on in my last E-Ray video, is that the E-Ray is very likely to be a performance hybrid rather than an efficiency hybrid. This means either limited or no EV only range, and that the battery will likely be on the smaller side to augment the LT2 power plant rather than provide high efficiency running for long periods of time. The car is unlikely to be a plug-in hybrid. This fresh news seemingly confirms this as no charging port was spotted on the car. Considering the effort they went to to show the level of detail and all the logos and buttons both inside the car and out, it means that it's unlikely they would have not made a charging port visible or a door for accessing the charging port if it existed. And lastly, some of the screenshots include fine print that indicates that the car is going to be available in 2023. This isn't a surprise, it's going to be a 2024 model car, which we saw in the URL change for the website, but like the Z06, it will likely be available sometime around the same time next year that the Z06 was this year. Fall most likely with deliveries first taking place late next year. This sums up everything I was able to find from this mistake, but let me know if I missed anything. So what didn't we learn about the car? Well, we didn't learn the pricing, though the car is expected to slot between the Stingray and the Z06 price-wise. Look for the car to likely slot in at the upper to middle of the prices between the two. My guess would be right around 89K base, though I was way off on my Z06 guesses way back when, so who knows. We also didn't learn a release date or an unveiling date, though a Corvette representative speaking to Corvette blogger said the following, Looks like the holidays came early for a few astute Corvette fans. Stay tuned for more. If you recall, the Z06 Visualizer came online in Q1 last year, so there's a chance that we're not too far from learning more about the car. Another big thing we didn't learn is the specifics of the powertrain. One motor in the front or two? My money is on two since it simplifies the drivetrain by not requiring a front differential. How much power and torque for the front drivetrain? Does the LT2 get a bump in power? My money is on no for simplicity's sake. And what is the total power output of the car? What are the drive modes? Is there a high efficiency mode for highway driving using that EV powertrain? Can it run in a full EV mode, a little or at all? What interesting tricks can they do with the electric side of the powertrain? I'll remind you that Ferrari got rid of reverse in all of their hybrid cars and let the electric motors do that work. And summing this all up, what does this do to the weight of the car, the grip of the car from the added weight, and critically, the performance of the car? We don't know. Lastly, one other thing we didn't learn is how the regen on demand will work in a performance car like this. In other GM hybrids, as I mentioned, there's a paddle on the back of the wheel to engage it. Since this car is already going to have the DCT for the gas power transmission, you're already going to have some paddles there. So how would that work with shifting? Or will they take another approach of using throttle liftoff to do the regen braking? Only time will tell in this case. So what does this all mean? Well, it means the GM is not resting on their laurels with the Z06 and is instead diving right into the next project with the E-Ray. This car is going to hit a bit different part of the market than the Stingray or the Z06. 
if the Stingray is analogous to a Porsche 911 Carrera and the Z06 is analogous to a 911 GT3, that makes the E-Ray a contemporary of the 911 Turbo S, all-wheel drive, all-day comfort, mountains of torque. Look to the E-Ray to set the fastest 0 to 60 times yet seen on the C8 platform, as well as to be a bit of a glimpse into one or two more future models planned on the C8 platform. Rumors of ZR1s and Zoros persist, leveraging an electrified front end combined with an LT6 and or a turbocharged LT6 means that there's still plenty of life left in that platform and the gas engines aren't dead just yet, thankfully. Fred's take. All right, now for my take. Until earlier this year, the rumors of the E-Ray didn't really interest me that much. I was picturing a Stingray with electric motors and it just didn't do anything for me. But three things have changed my interest a little bit and got my attention. First, the reveal video really gave me the chills. The car looked awesome. The Z06 wide body and the styling really set it off for me. Next, some spy footage of the E-Ray on the Nürburgring was released a couple of months ago, and those cars were hustling. It shows how serious these things are gonna be as a speed machine. And lastly, I drove a 992 GT3 back to back with a 992 Turbo S on track down in Atlanta. While the GT3 was sublime, my favorite car was actually the Turbo S. If the E-Ray is gonna be the big torque monster Corvette, that's gonna be a total blast to drive. The more information that's come out about the car, the more I've been interested in the car. Also, the rumored lower price will help this thing sell like hotcakes for all the people who wanted a spiritual successor from the high torque C7 Z06, right in that high five digit price range. Look for GM to sell as many of these things as they can before they retire the C8 generation, right up to the end of the production run. As to the Z06 versus the E-Ray, which one would I get? Well, I'm on the list for the Z06 and I can't afford both, but for now I think that the Z06 is still the king of the track, while the E-Ray is likely going to be king of the road. So thank you for watching, come back every Friday for new videos, and until next time, Fred out! <laughs>